in this first reading from the 17th chapter of Genesis. We have Abram's name being changed to Abraham, Avraham. In the addition of the Ham part, Ham means a people, a nation in Hebrew. And so Abram becomes Avraham, the father of many nations. Especially in the Old Testament, but I think you could think of a few other examples. Whenever you have a name change, you have a mission change. You have a change of direction. Nowadays, we do this by changing logos, I guess. Logos and fonts and things like that. Corporate documents. But the change of mission indicates that the Lord is taking what is good and repurposing it to something that is a better end for that which it was intended. And the beauty of this is the Lord is affirming that which is good. He takes Abram's fidelity, Abram's earnest desire to do the will of God, and then calls him out of his comfort zone, calls him out of his land, calls him out of the verdant pastures for his own flocks, where his material wealth would be utterly secure, and calls him to a new place, and calls his descendants to meet their wives, eventually bringing forth the 12 nations, the 12 tribes of Israel, whom then the Lord would liberate, making the Jewish people his chosen people, from whom a blessing for all would come. Abraham could not have known any of this. And yet, as he's given a new identity, he takes on a new mission. When you and I draw close to the Lord, you and I are revealed, the Lord reveals to each of us a new identity. That instead of being a really awesome baker, a really awesome host or hostess, a really awesome doer at my job er, that instead my primary identity is beloved son of the Father, beloved daughter of the Father. And in an age where we think we can just cut, cut copy, and paste our identities, change a few pronouns, and now I have a totally new identity, no wonder. Our mental health is abysmal. No wonder we've lost our way as a culture. A name change indicates a mission change, and it's given by God. Can you think of that New Testament case? Simon, whose name is changed to Peter, so that he may be a rock. That doesn't mean perfect. And there's very few people in the New Testament whose faults are more on display than our first pope. And yet the beauty of Peter's own fidelity amidst his mistakes, there's a certain perseverance there. In a certain way at this parish, I've been slightly indicating a name change here. We've always been known as MPB, which is fine as a nickname, But when I first got here, nobody ever said most precious blood. And so for a number of months, I would never use MPB. And in one sense, there's kind of a name change that I'm offering this parish. That we would be focused on the sacrificial love that Jesus gives. It's not that there was anything bad previously, per se taking that which is good and orienting it towards that which is better, to live out of the fullness of our name. And if you look around our church, except for a few square millimeters, the most precious blood is not depicted anywhere, especially not on our crucifix, which is kind of lamentable. The beauty of our Lord's blood poured out for love of us, as I've said in a homily, the liquid love of God, indicates part of our own identity. 
an identity of sacrificial love. And so you'll see in the back that display case that bears a scourge, that bears three nails, that bears a crown of thorns, will be on display between now and the end of Good Friday for people's own meditation of what it means to be the parish of our our Lord's most precious blood. Hopefully not that you find your pastor a scourge, but rather that we can meditate upon those gruesome instruments that offer us the revelation, the manifestation of the love of God. And that part of our identity, part of our mission, is to live and love sacrificially for the glory of God and the good of others. And this is the freedom of the children of God. Praised be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Let us stand and offer to our Lord the many prayers of our heart. The other beautiful part of a name change is we tend to think this happens only with the Old Testament or the New Testament, which is, you know, the first century of the church. And actually, it's going to happen with those kids over there. They're going to receive confirmation at the end of this month in which they take on a new name. In the inspiration of someone, a man or woman, or angel, who has given oneself completely over to the glory of God and love of neighbor. And part of this name change indicates a certain identity change that, yes, is actually capable, third graders are capable of that, of an intentional way of living, of whether it's listening to mom and dad and doing your homework, doing your chores without complaining, or the participation in the life of grace. So often, in churches with Catholic schools, it's the children who combust for the faith first, who come alive with the fire of the Holy Spirit first, and then go home and bring it to the parents. So you kiddos back there, you can bring the love of Jesus, the faith in his resurrection, back home to mom and dad, you can be missionaries as well. That's the beauty of this faith. That's the beauty of God's grace. That's God who chooses to use the littlest among us. It kind of goes without saying that over the past couple of years, this community has been in great flux and a number of people have left because of the changes that have been made. In part, Uh, A church that sings, this is the way we've always done it, is a church that's rigid and fixed and not able to adapt to the needs of the people. At the same time, it's been my experience, and many pastors have told me, that after about two to three years, people will start coming back. They'll see either the pastor's not such a bad guy, or the, the, the changes are not as crazy as they first thought. And so just as I use daily Mass as a grounds for beta testing homilies in the future, um, so too I offer you this uh, invitation. Uh, It's my hope that more and more people will come back from those who have left. Remember, a number of our people have left and gone to St. Ignatius Parish, and the Jesuits will no longer be with them because the Jesuits do not have enough vocations. And so they have to pull out of St. Ignatius which will leave those parishioners that were formerly here now there, it leaves them an extra flux. And so it's my hope that we would be a parish that does not rub anything in anybody's face, but is just this warm, welcoming truth, welcoming people to the truth of who Jesus is, both sacrificially and lovingly, and not offering any kind of uh, discomfort on that in that area. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.
Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle.